Hi everyone, welcome back into the studio. Well, I have to do another commission, so I, you know how I like to do sometimes. I like to take you guys along on a painting and show you kind of my thought processes through it, okay? So today, this is a, um, a 14 by 18, and my client or customer wants me to uh, do these kind of yellowish flowers. I put out some step photos. I usually, if I'm not filming something, I usually take step photos. You know, you can do it really nice with just your phone. Uh, take step photos along the way. It helps you remember some of the steps you did or, um, you know, how you did something. And you can usually, especially if you're learning, you can usually find out somewhere in there where you made a mistake, where you kind of came off on your plan and your painting. So taking step photos or filming something along the way is really a great way to go back and do some self-reflection and help you analyze stuff. So I take step photos and stuff all the way. This is a couple of them I took on this painted tray that I ended up selling and um, this customer wanted to buy that one but it was already sold. So she said, well, if I don't do it on a tray, uh, can you do it on a board? And yes, and uh, she wants kind of this this uh, kind of linen and gold, uh, more of an elegant kind of look to it. So I thought we would kind of paint this along together today and uh, see what we can do. Come up for this customer and uh, put it to And I love it when they always say, you know, kind of something like that, but do your thing. You always do good. I like, I like that kind of stuff. Okay, so we have some main contrast. You can see right down in through here. I took these yellow roses up onto a really casual background and contrast, and then I started painting out some of that contrast, but it starts out with a lot of contrast that's in before there. And this was the contrast that was back here was a raw umber, and I don't want to set out raw umber today. I'm going to use basically the, the YouTube palette that I use all the time. I did put out some medium white out here as well. I will put the list of all the colors like I normally do over on the video description or be underneath here, I guess, on the video description, okay? And I'm going to be using my Fusion brushes. This is a um, number 10 Fusion Flat that I'll do most of the painting with. This is a one inch Fusion Flat that I'll use on the background. I might even use scrapers. You know, I like to use scrapers, sometimes palette knives and stuff like that when I manipulate the colors. Value scales, everything like that. They're, they're all, all the downloads and everything, all the links and everything, again, are in the video description so you can get uh, some of that, okay? All right, and if you're new at painting roses, I'm gonna take this kind of slow and explain, do a lot of explaining for you. So if you're one that just has a couple minutes to watch a video, you might want to go watch somebody else. I'm going to explain to you how to do this and my thought process. Okay, I like to do that. I have a lot of my uh, viewers out there that are trying to learn. And so we're going to take you right along and tell you as much as we possibly can. Okay, all right. So... I have my colors out. This is my, my normal palette. My background, my board is a 14 by 18. This is a masonite panel or what is called a tempered hardboard panel. It's a little bit smoother. I gave this a coat of the me a, a color that's in the heritage line called medium beige with a little bit of light gray together. So you'll find some gray colors and um, medium beige. You just kind of mix it together. I get kind of a grayish kind of color that I like. It's a little bit warmer than what I used over here. Uh, just a touch warmer than what I used, so it has a, just a touch more medium beige in it, but I like it. Okay, so I'm going to put in some, some of these yellowish kind of roses, maybe even a little bit lighter than what the yellow roses are over here, because I have that white linen border that I have here. So part of my, part of my thought process is, is this light uh, linen border which we have to get in and incorporate in what we're doing here as well. And uh, so with that light border, I want the roses to be able to come off and at least go with that uh, light border there. But, uh, you know, so that's a consideration. So what I'm going to do first, though, is let's go in. I'm not going to I'm going to use just some extender here to thin the colors. I like extender, not always. Extender slows down. It's this real thin. It looks like water. It's real thin medium. It uh, is very slippery though. It is really slippery. It's completely non-toxic. Matter of fact, it's a food additive. It's a, so you, it's in a lot of foods. And uh, so it's, you don't have to worry about using it like you do with some of the oil solvents. Now, the, uh, I, I don't have the raw umber that I used before, but I can make beautiful colors from that, from burnt sienna and the pine green. And if I wanted to get it 
a touch more like the raw umber, which I don't think I want on this one, I would add just a tiny, tiny bit of the blue, and that'll make it just a really nice raw umber for you. But this makes a beautiful color here. Now, let's see. If I've, I, you know, I've, I've talked to you before about designs, about where to position flowers, how to position flowers. I want to put maybe the main, as a matter of fact, let me just do this. If I want to put, in because I'm going to cover it up, so it'll be all right. But if I, I want the main queen, what I call the queen, the largest of the rows, maybe about this size and this other one to come here, maybe dribble some down maybe a smaller bud here and I'll paint a, I'll paint a rosebud because this morning I had one of the comments on the video that said can you do more rosebuds she can show us that so let's don't let me forget we'll do a rosebud here okay so um maybe some of them opening up and you know on this other one I put some white blossoms and stuff but we might if we get too warm overall in the painting, we might go to a cool blossom or something like that. So, but I do like this position of really a large one and a medium sized one, right like that. You could turn it sideways, like you could turn this thing sideways here, turn those those two in position there, just look wonderful as well. Okay, so something like that. But anyway, so my main thrust line, which is called in design, this would be called a thrust line. This is the line that of movement that would come this way. And so my gaze of my rose would be out like this. Okay. And if I did that, then, uh, my stem lines and stuff like that would have to come down through here onto this side here. I could bend them down like this and put that, that thrust line this way. But the main view line is going to be this way, which means in a lot of time when I do my background treatments, I like to do it the opposite way. So my background treatments will come in at this angle here. This makes a, a thing called St. Andrew's Cross, which is an old Dutch way of designing Dutch florals and stuff. That way it, it puts a crossing motion into your painting, which is just wonderful. And uh, I like that. I like the contrast of that cross motion here so I'm going to loosen up some of this right now and let's put in some some warmer touches of color here and so we did pine green and burnt sienna then we're going to take pine green and burnt sienna and separate them a little bit as well so you get some other colors coming out here so you have pine green burnt sienna then burnt sienna pine green different colors coming out here like this. Sometimes I will pull these out like this, which gives you the impressions of leaves and background elements. Or I'll push some of that out like this, especially into the outside areas like that that just make a, a real pretty kind of um, uh, area that you don't really need anything in there really it just it's just movement it's contemporary it's movement um sometimes i'll come up here with the green let's go green with a little yellow here and some of these colors right up through here and push this right into our thrust line this way and take some of that right back out here like this and Every once in a while, take your frame in there and see if you like some of those colors that are going on there inside of that frame. And that looks pretty good. Now, one of the other things, and I haven't done this for, for years, so I thought I mm, maybe I'll do that, you know. Because if she doesn't like it, I can always I can always sell it, and I'll try again. But the uh, so this is a color called uh, it's a mica gold, and it's a non toxic gold. It's a wonderful gold, um, and it is uh, about the color of that outside gold on the frame. So this is a gold paint. It's in the heritage lines, and it's for doing stuff like this. So I'm going to take a, a touch of that gold and push that right into that painting there, into that background there. Now, from a direct on, when you do it like that, and you do it just real casual like that, hopefully I won't cover it all up. As a matter of fact, let's just go out here like this and put a few streaks of that gold, maybe a mark or two. That's just what I like, that little bits of hits, very contemporary. That's what makes it really fun here. You just get wild and crazy and try some things. and. 
so when you look at it directly on, you don't see it. But when you the light catches it, you get that hit that mica, and it just does a real quick little gl uh, glint, you know, a little pew, sparkle. And that'll really tie that frame, see, right into that painting. I think, boy, you know, if you're really contemporary, you could frame that. <laughs> you know, you want flowers, okay. So that uh, that might work pretty well. Now... So I want that one rose right in there. I might lower this mark of this burnt sienna down a little bit down here. And that's just a little bright, so I'll just run a little green in it. Soften that out a bit here. Oh, I like that pulling right down like that towards that gold. That looks really neat there, too. Now, the sad thing is you get all of this wonderful stuff here, and most of that all covers up. But it covers up with beautiful flowers, so that's not so bad. All right, so we want this rose. Let's move this rose right up here into this position. I'm just going to back out. Not all of it, because I want some of that to carry through. That is going to be about the power of that rose. I'll have that secondary one sit right in there, leaving some of that gold coming out right there. That'll be good. We'll do a, maybe a rosebud right out here. And... Maybe a smaller juvenile one right down here, and then that we'll call that for the composition. And maybe fill up a couple of leaves. We could add a blossom or two. We'll see what happens. Okay, so what I'm going to do, like I did with that other one there, is I take some of my cool color, because I want to create a warm, cool contrast. I'll take some of my cool color. This is the um, quinacridone color here, and let's just warm it just a touch with some of that burnt sienna right there for just a second. Let's come right down in. And on the roses, what I do, so what I do is I always imagine, okay, the three circles. So here's the, that that's the throat of the rose, the bowl of the rose, and the outside petals of the rose here. So I imagine I take my brush right down in here, step way back on your handle, push the brush up and around, this draw some movement. I paint for movement, not petals. I paint movement. And sometimes I'll soften that up and around like this. But I want it, I want a little more color, a little deeper. So I'm going to add just a bit of the red violet, which is a deeper, darker tone right into the center. Now, so I'll push that up and around. Now just lift the pressure on your brush. Little half circles and marks coming up. Don't go all the way up to the top. Let that darker color sit down into the base of the bowl of that rose there. Now let's take some burnt sienna with some of that color, maybe a touch of this brownish green right in here. And let's push some of that right in here, which would be the bowl of the rose. We'll let those colors kind of collide right over here. This will be the shadow side of the rose. So we'll just let those collide over there. And we'll paint that rose a little different than that one, but pretty close to it. We'll let those shadows come together. Let the shadow of the background and the shadow of the rose come together. And I'll just swirl this around. This is where I like to use my hands. If you're using oils, don't use your hands. Just find yourself a soft brush. Soften some of that out, okay? All right, now I'm gonna, I, one of the things I constantly do, and I don't always tell you guys, and I, I should, but is I constantly carry a paper towel and I'm constantly wiping out some of the excess of my brush. You don't see me very often, you know, going in there and rinsing the brush because that adds water into my painting and I don't always like water unless I want to specifically add that water. So I paint with the dirty brush a lot. Um, and uh, so, and you can, but to, to take out some of that color, I just pinch wipe my brush like this with the paper towel and it takes out that color. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over to the softer medium white here first and some yellow, some yellow oxide. This, make, this will make a softer yellow and go about one to one here or so. Just put it all the way across your brush here, okay? And let's come out. This is gonna be the, the, the top front of the rose here. So let's just pull down, hit some of that violet and, and draw it right down. You don't have to go all the way down. Just draw that around. Now, try not to paint too long because what you'll do is you'll blend it too much. I like a little bit of these streaks, okay? I like a, a few of these streaks. But you, you could take a bit of this down just like this, 
to soften so you can start to imagine where that bowl of that rose is. But just don't put on too much color because then it's harder to paint. So keep your color kind of thin. And you can add a touch of extender to this, okay, just to get the colors to slide. Now, so I picked up a little bit more. My color will be a little lighter. I imagine another little petal there. I'm going to imagine a petal coming back right back here. I'm letting the color go off my brush now as well. So this, when I ever and I go back here or down here in the shadow side, I lift the pressure on my brush. There's not much pressure on my brush, so I'm depositing just a little bit of paint. And what I'm painting more than petals is I'm painting the movement, the round movement of the flower. That's what I'm looking for, okay? So I'll come back up over here. Let's add some of the outside petals here that we would into a flower. I'm going to pull right in towards the bowl. I'm not going to reload my brush. I'm just going to let this color fade away out here and go away here, just like that. Okay, pull some of that in. And uh, yeah, anywhere down into here towards that bowl. As I come down out to the front, sometimes you'll see me pull out. So I don't always pull in. I can pull from the bowl out like this as well. And I'll do that many times. I It's, it's not the actual stroke, because sometimes when you constantly paint one direction, you're going to make the petals all the same size and stiff. At least if you're like me and a left brain painter, you will do that. So I will change sometimes just the way I paint the direction of that flower. I'm going to add a little more medium white here. So we have the yellow here and now I'm going to add a little bit more medium white, lighten this up a bit here. And if we lose too much of our yellow, we go too much white, I'll show you later on how we can bring that back really easy. I'm just going to put a softer petal in there. So what I did is I imagined I imagined the bulls coming around like this. I'm just kind of pulling down. I'm, this is the calyx right down here where that stem line is going to be joining in. So I'm imagining everything. Everything is attached up in here to the rose. It comes down and attaches right down there in that calyx. So that's where I kind of imagine it coming together. And you can, let's take a little white and a tiny bit of the quinacridone over here. Let's make this front a little cool. The white will keep it cooler. This yellow has, this color has yellow in it. So it, it's warm. The white will help keep it cool. And so it'll make it lighter, but cooler. So let's put a little bit of that warm, cool contrast in there. Right in there, just a bit here of that quinacridone center coming in here. So it's a little different here. I don't always like to paint the same. I always like to have a little bit of difference. And I can I can even put some gold into some of these flowers later on if I want. We'll see, we'll see what happens. And so I have that cooler color there. Now I'll probably put some light in there, but you can also go back at any time and put in a little bit more yellow. Like if you wanna have more yellow, you can just drop that yellow back into that rose there. You're slowly building it, and that's what I want to do. I, I'm going to slowly build paint in this area, keep paint transparent over here, okay? Now, you can also add this. This is the open medium. This is the Derivan's. That's this stuff right here, Derivan's open medium. And since Derivan makes the, the Heritage Multimedia paint, everything they would they make in the Derivan line here is going to go with the, uh, the Heritage colors without a problem. So you can use that without a problem. Now, so I'm going to take a little open medium, some of my yellows here, okay? Maybe a bit of the quinacridone and stuff with that. But here, a little softer. And let's come right over here to this side, more of the yellow. See, you can see the yellow shape there. Pull in towards that bowl. We'll just put in there a bit of the that side of the rose here. Bit of yellow. Let's bring this petal in like that. So it's going to appear darker. No light, not a lot of light over here. And we'll pull those, push those together there, right like that. We can, uh, you know, adjust the sizes and stuff. And again, I might just pull some out here as well, here, just like that. All of this, as a matter of fact, let me show you. I'm just gonna take some yellow here 
and some quinacridone, some of that color I'm just using really. All of this can change. I can reset any of the petals any time in here just by setting the rows, and I'll do that sometimes. I call it resetting the rows, pushing the colors like that. So I start to see the rows in the bowl in here, and it's basically, these even take some burnt sienna here. A little burnt sienna, which is the warmer of it, so it makes that nice warm. Oh, I like that. And maybe just a, and separate out a bit of the cool quinacridone here and see what I like in here as far as the colors. Let's get the yellow oxide right down into here. A little bit of that, oh, that burnt sienna climbing a little high for me. I don't want to take the bull shadow all the way around. I did that for a few years as I was learning roses and I think they're prettier if you let the shadow kind of disappear as it comes up. You know, it's, it gets prettier. So we'll leave that heavier shadow down here. Let it go up to here. You can even go up to like a Darulite or even just a touch of the yellow, Hansa yellow, if you want to keep more of that yellow look right in there into that rose. That's kind of pretty. And to get like little light edges that I have out here and stuff, that's where you can take some of that yellow. Let's grab some of those yellows. So not right. let's even add a bit of open medium. Open medium will slow down the drying time, which is not as important. But what it's also going to do is make the color a little bit more transparent because it's thick and clear, see? So it's going to make the color more transparent. So the more you add, the more transparent that color is and the less opaque it can become. So, and whenever you add white to a color, it's going to become very opaque. So adding a little open medium into the color with a little bit of white will make a, uh, give you a color you can draw with, see here, very easy, but it's not super opaque. So I can get those light little edges there and those little marks. And if you just touch it like this, you can get those little marks that you see out on the edge of a petal there so and there's just all kinds of ways you can do that let's just drop one in right down here like this pull that in maybe an edge of a light right out there like that and sometimes i will you know pull these several times let's pull this one this way a little bit out this way but i'll push and pull the pedal several times to get all kinds of different little edges and stuff like that to it. So all kinds of ways you can do it. Let's go to with the softer, just a bit of white and that yellow here. And let's make this lighter forward petal here. Light mostly to the top side, because that's where it is. We'll just pull down, just pull down, lift the pressure. Kind of imagine that petal rounding right here into the bowl, just like that, okay? Now, if you come down this side here, you don't want that white in there. You want to go back to some of your yellows, maybe a bit of the, the burnt siennas and stuff. You don't want that white in there because you're down into the shadow side here. So we want to create some petals. Oops, just not very much. Maybe a little bit of white, but you don't want it as light as that one. We want this now to start to come down here so we don't have as much light on this side of it. Just a tiny bit here. So I pick it up, and you can see I pick up just a bit of it here on the edge of my brush, and I'll push up in, and if I push, I can push that shadow back up in there. Here, push that out, push that color in and out. I use my finger a lot to start to, see what I'm looking for is the motion, the movement of the petal in and out. That's what I'm looking for more than anything else. Let's take a little more yellow and I'll just draw that edge right in there like that. Pull that in and see, I don't have to do very much because I just push that motion, that movement into that rose on that side, see? Okay, so, and then it's just a matter of how light you want stuff. Do you want a little bit of that Hansa yellow in there, a little brighter, a little lighter as you, you know, as you start to come up here, do you want to make some lighter brighter little petals coming in here like that one right there you know maybe i want another one right up here like this coming in this way maybe pulling out a bit here 
And sometimes I'll leave them, you know, I'll make them very perfect. Sometimes I'll leave them like on this rose that's over here. See, I do a lot of, if I want the petal to be very soft like that and whisper and disappear, I pull out lifting up with my brush and it just disappears. Let it disappear here. Or you can add the disappearing medium so it just disappears. But a lot of that disappearing goes with the pressure of your brush. Lift the pressure. Don't always attack the, the palette or the painting with your brush. These are very, very soft. These fusion brushes are very soft. You use a real light pressure. They'll just put a whisper of color on there. And that's where that light airiness comes from. That whisper of color. You know, and that's, that's what makes them really, really pretty, I think. All right, let's go back that and put some of that, uh, that let's go back and put some of that nice, mid, the uh, um, quinacridone and the yellow together back in there. So, and I'm gonna carry some of this. So this is the yellow and the quinacridone. So it's, I put that other cool on there. It's just a bit too cool. So I'm going to put some yellow and some quinacridone back in there, just like that. And I think that's kind of a pretty coloring, a little bit more pinky than what I had here. Here I put in just a bit more through the center. So let's push it in just a bit more here. And you can reset the center. If it's all dry on you in there, just take a little bit more nap of the red violet, excuse me, and a little open medium to it and just reset the dark. I'll do that many times in a painting. I use the dark to actually draw the inside of the rose. Let's put just a touch of that right over here onto that shadow side, maybe all the way out here, out into some of that color there. So now you can see, and, and what you're doing here, and you don't worry about messing up all your other petals. I'm not going to worry about that. You know, I pretty much took out what I did just a minute ago. And that's okay. I'm looking at the movement of the flower. That's what I, I tend to do. And especially when I'm painting a, a con, you know, a commission piece or something like that, I'll take my time and look at the flower several times as I paint it. So let's put in a, a bit more light, uh, wonderful light right up in here right up like that, maybe a bit more light, right up here, pull that down, build up that light, and rather than having absolutely perfect petals here, what I'm gonna do is just build this more with movement to the flower here, more movement here than anything else. Let's put a little bit so I can use just a corner of this brush and put in a another petal right back there. Set that one in. And I can always take a soft yellow, maybe a little quinacridone right in through here, and just run it right in there to incorporate that petal back into the rose. Now, those two petals are kind of lined up. I don't like that. And that's my left brain. So I'm just gonna move this one over just a touch more. So it's a, make it just a bit different there. That's kind of neat. And you can put in, like I can put in another little top to this petal here if I want, just by sho shoving the light up there to the top of it. Um, you know, making a, a nice mark here in to put some movement in and out. Push that right into the, into that other side of the rose there, which is kind of pretty. I want to go a little bit lighter, maybe even a touch of the gold in here. Gold will add a bit of a glimmer to it, which is really pretty, especially if you have a frame that has that in there. So we'll add just a bit of that here to this. It makes a real pretty little bit. And so what I'll do is, uh, what I'm thinking about doing, So is building this up even a little bit more light in here. Now, if you lose your, don't worry about losing your shadow in here. Let's just take a bit more of our quinacridone and a bit of the uh, yellow. You can even add just the tiniest bit of gold in there. And see, you can go from the shadow, oh God, that's pretty. Lift that right off, right up there. So you can, re you can revisit that shadow. Now you can take your finger like I like to do several times, you know, many times. 
push the movement back in there. But see, I don't want it. See all that movement in there? See all that movement in there? Don't do it too many times. You will lose that movement. It'll all become one color, especially as you add white. And you always remember white is the most opaque color that you really have. It's a dangerous color to use. As you start adding more and more and more, your flower will become opaque. So sometimes take that shadow and push that right back up there. Does not take very much white. Little bits of it here, okay? Little bits, little tiny bits of it here. To draw petals, draw a petal edge here like this, just boom. There's a little petal edge. Let's bring one right down here on this side here. Let's just bring that right down, little petal edge there right like that. Let's push just a little bit of that light and gold right here, right up on the tip and just leave that real soft like that. Okay. Now let's get rid of out of that white. Let's go back to yellow, a little bit of quinacridone and maybe even a little bit of gold here coming over to this side. That's pretty transition right in there. Yeah. That looks like you know what you're doing. I love that transition right there. And so we'll uh, work a bit more gold right over here. And right up onto that edge, we'll do the highlight here, mostly with like the gold in our brush there on this side. Let that, that because that gold will do it as well. Let some of this, let's just put in like this is another little petal here. And let that just kind of fade away into the background there on that side. That's kind of a pretty little, that's kind of a pretty little rose. That gold, that's an amazing, I, I hope the camera can catch all that. Usually can't, even though they're 4K cameras, they can't capture absolutely everything. But I'm going to take here just a bit of the gold right in here. Yep, just a bit of the gold and hit the lights, the highlights of those petals, the light edges right there, softening, leaving that quinacridone right in there. That's really kind of pretty. Whew. Okay. <laughs> oh, I know she'll love that one. It's a little bit different than that one. You know, I mean, if you want, you can put more yellow out here and get those in there and stuff. But um, yeah, it's a, it's really, I mean, the, the gold is really catching. Now see, this is already dry, so this is going to be easier to paint over here. But uh, that gold really hits it. Now we might, just for giggles here, pick up a bit of the gold. Just, yeah, that's pretty. Just a touch of those right in there. Just a little touch of that gold. So it shimmers just a bit here. That's pretty good. All right, let's go over to the other one. Now, I'm going to put just a light coat of maybe some of that green and some extender on this. Why? Because it's going to help me soften my colors a bit here sometimes i like to paint into wet sometimes i don't in the you know in the um in the painting challenges that i do there's the 30 days of roses and i tried to use all different kinds of techniques over the 30 days i painted a small composition every day for 30 days different one and i use all different kinds of techniques if you haven't painted that and you're trying to learn roses you need to go paint that 30 day challenge i have some of my students now on the uh, cha you know on the the group that we belong to they're repainting the 30 day challenge and seeing how they've improved over a year and it's dramatic so the 30 day challenge is a good thing to do let's take some of the yellow some of the gold some of the quinacridone kind of brush mix not don't mix it up completely and let's come over here and let's start down into that and just bring some of that color let that just and I, I adding the gold and one of the reasons and I'm just going to pull it like this is because I'm over here on a gold strike so I want to get a bit of that gold shimmer that's from that strike right here into that rose see so I'm going to pick up a little more gold and push that on the nice thing about painting with the gold and I used to paint with this gold all the time and I haven't for a number of years, and it's just so pretty, is that, see, I like that gold shimmer through there, so this one will shimmer a little bit more. We might take a bit of that gold, just the tip of that gold, see, 
and just add it right out here like this. Oh boy, that that really looks good. This right there to that, that gold picking up that so that it's going to travel right up and through there. So that looks good. And just take an edge of that. See, just push that edge right out there like that. That, that really does look pretty out there like that. So let's pick a cooler color, no gold in it, cooler red violet right down into the center lift off the pressure come up and around up and around lift the pressure use just barely even though it looks like i'm doing a lot i'm barely just whispering and hitting the surface there so i create that movement in there but i don't want to do a whole bunch in there because i like that simple gold just boom boom because that picks up and hits that gold streak coming right there like that let's see how that looks yeah yep 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 we might have to raise the price. <laughs> oh, I won't do that to her. That's, uh, these are they're just so much fun. I love to create like this. I take a, you see, I'm not copying it. You're using it for inspiration. And that's where it really, guys, where I want you to, that are learning. Yeah, when you're learning, there's a certain amount of copying you should always do. But don't copy so strict that you that you stop your own inner creativity. You don't want to do that. You want to just kind of let that happen. But there are certain things you want to avoid, like too much white. You get too much white in there, and your gold won't shine. White will always overpower everything, and it'll take out everything. So small amounts is best, okay? All right. So let's, using that as a caution, let's take some yellow and some gold and a little bit of this quinacridone just a touch of this light in here we'll create a light mottled color and we'll push the light edge now you see all the tones coming out of that see we'll push the light edge here right up here onto that rose that light edge and let's just take a bit of that pull that down that'll be the bowl over here we're just going to whisper let it fade away. That's the shadow side of the rose there. Let's pick up just a tiny bit. No white. Just a tiny bit. Maybe just a little light. It needs to go just a touch lighter as we can pick up. Yeah, that's good. That edge. Create that front leading edge of that rose. Now, Whatever we paint here can't be lighter than that right there. If we want to get more into the rose, then we need to get more light into that one. And more light into that one will destroy some of that beautiful coloring we have in there. So there's another way to do that. But if you want, in other words, okay, how do you make a color look lighter without adding white? There's a rule, color theory. So those of you that haven't studied color theory, if you really want to know the easiest way to do stuff, you need to study color theory. And that one of the rules that we use in color theory is called simultaneous contrast. Simultaneous contrast is if I want this rose over here to look lighter without adding white, which would destroy that, then I need to surround it with a dark so it looks like a different color, okay? Uh, for example... Okay, for example, let's, uh, let me just take a sheet of paper here, okay? I will take, and I'll show you what it looks like. Let's just say I have this color medium white, okay? I put medium white, let's do it right out over here to the background. So I put medium white right out here on, well, actually I have to do it over here, sorry. Don't want to paint on my board. So I put medium white out here, and you see the color medium white, right? If I took that medium white and I put it out here on my board, it's going to look lighter. See how it looks lighter than what it does here on the white? On the white, it looks like one color. On the background, it looks like a, a totally lighter color. But I didn't lighten it. I didn't lighten it. Why does it look lighter? It's a thing in color theory called simultaneous contrast. It's a fooling of your eye. And just like... Just like a camera, your eye justifies white all the time. It's constantly looking for light. And so if, if you put something on that's darker next to that light, it will make it look lighter. So if I want to make a flower in an area 
here look lighter. And that's why this has so much contrast right in here. There's so much dark, it actually looks lighter right in here than what it does in the final because I put those green leaves in. But I control that, and now's a good time to control that. Take some of your burnt sienna, some, uh, some green, and some red violet. One of the things you see me do all the time is take red violet and green in towards some of my center areas of my flowers, and I'll drop that in before I go put painting even in some of this stuff. Now, look at how much lighter that just, those little color marks here make the rest of the painting look. And I haven't lightened them up. So I can make this whole rose look a little lighter just by dropping in some of that shadow tone right there, right in there like that. It doesn't take very much, just enough so that your eye justifies it as a dark. Let me take, and I'll just add a little extender into this to thin it out a bit. We'll use a little bit of this over here, right into some of that gold. That'd be pretty. Right there like that. That'd be pretty. But see how all of a sudden it's visually lightening up the rose, okay? So sometimes if you're going to mess up a rose by adding more and more white because you want it to see it get lighter, the answer is not more and more white into the rose. The answer is more and more dark into the background. Does that make sense? Okay. So, and that's some of the stuff that simple little little courses like color theory teach you. I see, I like that little, wow, that looks great. That little broken line there, channeling a little bit of Richard Smith there. He was such a master at this stuff. I'm just gonna push a little bit of that around here. That's kind of pretty. Here, ooh, yeah. That's kind of pretty right down through there like that. Sometimes it's, you don't wanna get too much here, Dave, but that's really kind of pretty, those colors. See, and it's just, it's just creating, and now it's, those darks really making that light there glow, you know, and it really does great things. Don't forget to change your paper towel out every once in a while as you change your brush. Okay, so now we got to go in and, you know, leaving this rose here pretty simplistic is not really a bad idea. Don't get too much white, but let's add some, some yellow, excuse me, some gold right into some yellow and the quinacridone here. And let's just simplistically here paint right into that dark. Just leave a little bit of an edge here right in like that okay and right into here so you see guys it's uh, sometimes in painting these flowers and stuff it's not the light it's the dark okay and you'll find that I've found that out in my career that the darks actually paint so much better and add the interest than the lights so you don't want to get too many too many of those lights around. Let's take a little bit of medium white and a little bit of yellow. Keyword there is little here. And we'll build this rose a bit more right down there like this. But we're gonna leave this one mostly simplistic there. Okay. Let's put a softer little petal maybe right out here. Just an idea. That rose petal turning right there, okay? And we could have a bit more light right in there, so I'm gonna try it. A bit of the white, we'll put some gold with it. Bit of it, and just splash. Just a touch of that right in there. Now, I'm too light down towards the bowl, but I'm not gonna worry about that. What I'm gonna do is take some of my bowl, my shadows that I have here, put them in my brush and lift up into that light and take just a bit of it away. Maybe a touch more yellow since that has to be yellow in there. There we go. Nice soft little look building into that one. And we can take a chisel. So put this in your brush like this. Pull through to get that little bead of paint. That's what I use to draw. I call it the petal edging technique. That's what I use to draw and we can use that to draw a little chisel here. Of a, of a petal right there on that rose. Maybe just a touch of the lights and gold here. Right up here, a little bit lighter. 
Let's put one more little chisel here. Just chisel right through some of that golden light there. Chisel through. Shape one right in there. It's kind of a pretty... And the question becomes, I don't like that transition in there. I like that one a little better where I have more violet in there. So I'm going to pick up some violet, and that was that violet and yellow, and push that transition of violet and yellow in there a bit more. Yeah, that's a prettier kind of a transition. Then we'll come back and push some of that light chisely gold color in there. Right in there like that. Maybe a bit more of the medium white and gold so it's not quite so light. Right across the front here. I like to use my finger to push those together. Yeah, that's kind of softer and prettier. Maybe a bit of the gold, more of the gold. Right in here. Right there, just leave that. Just boom, there it is. And uh, real soft, a little more quinacridone in that here. So it's real soft over here. Just an idea of petals. You don't need very much over there. Just an idea here. That's good. And uh, I don't really need too much on these outside ones. Just a, a hint there. And I think I'm going to let those just kind of fade away over there. Kind of like that. But I really should. It, it's a real light dark right there. So I really should take a bit of that dark right out over here express that out on this side of the rose and take that right down into the background a bit. That anchors, what that always does is anchors the rose to the background. So I do like, uh, I do like that, that uh, dark of the rose going right into the background at some point. That's what keeps the roses so soft that you see me paint all the time is because I do that softness. Here. I'm going to raise this up by just lifting off some of that light and putting that shadow in there, and which is going to shorten the bowl. It'll flatten out the rows. Those are all stuff that's going to come to you, but it'll flatten out the rows, and I'll put another chisel petal here instead, which will flatten out the rows a little bit more. There we go changing it from an up and down position. So if the bowl is too long, it looks very up and down. So by lifting that up, taking off that bowl, shortening that bowl petal and bringing in a crossing petal here, I shorten the rows. So, and that's what I felt the rows was getting a little bit too long. That's another thing I always look at. There we go. Let's push so that center is really dark there. Let's just put a little movement down closer in there and soften that dark just a bit, okay? There you go. Okay, so now you have those on there. And those are two very different, very pretty roses. Okay, so the question I had was, how do you do rosebuds? Really easy. Rosebuds are just an a oval. So we'll take some burnt sienna and some quinacridone here. I love that color movement in there, so I don't wanna get into that too much. Let's just paint an oval shape right in there, okay? And we're bringing light in up to from the top of that side. So let's take some gold, some yellow, and some quinacridone right up here. We'll imagine the top petal of the, the bud that's closed up. So it's closing up and pulling right down into an oval there. And we have... I'm going to put a little burnt sand, a little bit of this toned green in there. So the back part is just up a little higher and around. So it's everything is like, instead of doing a circle, you're doing an oval up and around. Let's put just a touch of the red violet in there. There we go. Okay. Now on the other side is the shadow side. So we'll darken it down just a bit and put in just an idea of the oval. So it's the bowl is actually a small little oval. Now, you can leave it like that and put some calyx and stuff out there, but since these are two massive, open-up, mature roses, 
I'm going to open this one up just a bit. So in a bud, I would actually leave it pretty simple like that. As the bud goes to more of a juvenile flower, we'll grab a little more gold, a little bit more medium white, not white, medium white, and some the yellows, and we'll pull in a petal that's starting to fall down or open up here, and then I'll push these two together to incorporate their movement together right there like that, and that bud starts to come in. Now you can chisel other little petals down like this so one's getting ready to open up and that's how so the more that you start to chisel down the more that that rosebud starts to uh, open up but here I want this rosebud also to be very soft over here so I'm going to take some dirty reds and stuff here and just start to uh, soften some of the color and the movement out here so it dissipate or disappears out here just like that so I don't I just want it to sit quietly back there we'll take a little bit of green a little pine green that's not going to show up real well so maybe a little pine green a little dark there we go you can put the septals on or the calyx area if you want you can draw out individual little leaves like taking your brush on a point pulling it down um, I like that dark I'm going to carry just a bit of that dark out here. And I can lighten up and shape this outer side of the rosebud here just by putting a few little marks. I don't even have to go all the way around it. But see, all of a sudden, I put this little bit of dark. Let's put a line out here. A little bit of dark, and it lightens up the rosebud. What kind of contrast is that called? Simultaneous contrast, right? It's a huge, guys... That is a huge technique in painting. Photographers use it all the time. I used to, when we ran a magazine, I used to take the photos of it. I loved it because if I wanted to take a, make a picture lighter for something without putting on more lights, I just put more darks around it and it, the object will look lighter. The camera will see it lighter So, because it white justifies. And so... Uh, it's just such a it's just such a, te a great technique and it, it does work. All right, enough of that. Boy, I love that. That is so. Let's let's take a look. Let's take a look. Yep, that's coming along. That's gonna be. Boy, I don't know if I'm gonna sell this one. <laughs> you know, it's sometimes you know you you have fun with these and. You know, you're creating when you have fun with them. It's hard to let them go because you've put a lot of thought and energy and fun into it, and it's hard to let them go, you know. But let's put a, let's go over here with some green and I actually add some yellow, a little bit of medium white, and some of that gold so it shimmers just a bit. Let's see where we are. That might not show up. Might have to go to white and a little bit of yellow in there as well. But I do like that bit of that gold in there. It just shimmers just a bit. There we go. Yeah, just the idea of some of these leaves here. Just an idea of leaves here. I'm not going to paint a whole bunch of them. Just the ideas of them. Like that. And, you know, like over here. Imagine like that's a shot of light coming out. And you just put a little bit of green right there. Boom. And then maybe over here, slightly darker because you're heading into the shadows. Don't paint a whole leaf in there. Just give the impression of it. That's what impressionism does. See? And I'll give the impression of a light to dark leaf while leaving some of that original movement in there. And that just looks great. You know, that kind of stuff just looks great into a painting. So you might... You know, take something like that right out over here and push some of that, push some of that right out there. You can take some of the light and turn that now into a bit of a leaf, an idea of a leaf. Don't have to paint, even paint a leaf. You just put the green out there like that and it starts to look like a leaf. That's up to you. Sometimes leaves and stuff can give the painting too much stiffness, so you don't want to because there are stiff little ovals out there, you know, so that's up to you if you're going to do that. So, you know, just little ideas. A little bit of it breaks the line. That's up to you. 
Some of you will like it, some of you don't. Okay, that's up to you. And, you know, do I leave that area there more open? We want one more right down over here. So let's take a little quinacridone, maybe a little red violet into it. Maybe even some of these little greens. And let's come right down here. We'll let it slide this way a bit more here. We'll paint it slightly darker. So a little bit more red violet. Matter of fact, I'm just gonna pick up a blob of it, push it in there, lift the pressure out, right like that. Maybe little hits of gold right over here. So I might just hit a little bit of that red violet and gold right in there, like that. Okay, and um, yeah, that's gonna work. But we're gonna go medium white and yellow, and that's gonna be really light, so we have to maybe hit some of the violets and stuff with it as well. And uh, that's, a, a, mm, that's a little close to being too much. Let's take a little bit of green right with some of those colors. Makes a more toned color. Let's just push that right in and down and around into the bowl of the rose. And you can add some extender or something to it too. I'm gonna to paint it real fast so I don't have to. But that will put a nice toned color we can paint into which will help eat away some of our lightness when we start to develop petals and stuff. So you can see already it's not quite as light here. So it's just kind of like pre-painting the area with a little dark. It just helps you control a bit here. And I'm just going to do impressions. So if you notice, I'm not even very stiff with the colors like I was on the other one because I want to do more that's too much right there. Lift the pressure. I want to do more, just an impressionistic rose here. Just so that you see it's there, more than painting it perfect and stuff here. So, and it's overall right now too cool for the rest of the painting. So if you, really see, you can see it's really, really cool compared to the other ones there. So I'm going to need some more yellow right in here to warm it up. And let's just warm it up. Let those collide for a second. Warm that up until you... And see, I'll just keep applying the warmth here until I see it, maybe even some of the gold, until I see it start to advance here to where I want it. Then I know I've got the light. Now all I have to do is petal it. So I got kind of a neat little shape there on the rose and everything. So now I'll petal it here and some medium white with some of those colors, the golds and the yellows, maybe even just a touch of the red violet in there, just a little here. We don't want to go too light. So I'll pull in. Let's pull another one across, a little chisel mark here. Lighter up at the top, and then we'll just let it fade away to nothing down over here, really. It's just going to fade away to nothing. Here, we'll do some light little petals here, shaping the rose a bit. Maybe a bit of that gold and quinacridone here, and touch of yellow, and let that movement, that's the movement inside the rose here. Just have little half circles, just push the color around, let it fade there. A bit. It's a beautiful warm color there. Oh golly. That, see that streak of gold Toom, right through there? That's a happy accident that makes it look like I know what I'm doing. And we'll push that around. Just a touch more medium wide into that. Don't want to go up too fast. And we'll use it mostly on the tips here of the petals to bring in just a touch more light here. Just like that. And you know, I, I bring in that dark. Remember I said that earlier, bringing in that dark right down through here, letting that anchor into the background is such a great way to really anchor that rose back there and pull that. Just so you pick up some of that color that's really nice. I want to do one more little chisel. Gold, yellow, and some medium white. 
of a petal here needs a bit more light. Gotta be careful, this is getting up pretty close. Here. There we go. That's kind of pretty. Whew, boy. Yeah, that's kind of pretty. Now the thing is, we're, I, I think I do want to bring in some green. And I'm going to do them dark, really dark. Green and red violet. Ideas of stems here. Now one of the things I do like to do is just some almost pure burnt sienna as well. And I like those kinds of looks here. And I just draw back and forth a bit to get some of that nice stem movement. So I've got this powerful gold going this way. This movement of that flower coming up this way. That's that St. Andrew's cross. I like that. We'll push in a bit more of this color. Sometimes I, to to show off, you know, young leaves, I'll take the the uh, some green and some uh, burnt sienna and some extender here, and I'll shape, which I like to do on a lot of paintings, shape a younger leaf, let it sit there for just a second, and then just pull your finger through and let some of that background come back down through there, here like this. And especially out like in this clear area here of the painting, that's kind of a neat little thing to do. Let it sit for just a second. And what the colors are doing is um, uh, setting in, settling in into the matte surface. And you take kind of your clean finger and you just pull through and that'll create the two-tone leaf, a little bit of light to one side. So quick, easy way, all a primal way to add a leaf, a nice, easy leaf. Here we can add a bit of a stem right there to it. Here, another idea of a stem, a few leaves there. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of pretty. I don't think I'll. And you know, you can add all kinds of other things. You know, like maybe this is another stem coming off through this one right here. You know, and, uh, the idea of it. You could bring. It depends on how much you want going on in the painting. Bring in a, another idea of a one or two or a little leaf or something like that in there. Um, I can paint a pretty much a green, but a dark green right in there. Put a bit of that color. Matter of fact, I'm just going to leave that little texture that's there as well. It's this beautiful color. And uh, and quinacridone and. Cronacridone and green and cronacridone and the burnt sienna are just real pretty colors that uh, you can use throughout the cronacridone. Just gives it, a, again, another little bit of a glow. And uh, not cronacridone, I'm sorry, darulite. I'm touching into darulite saying cronacridone. How many of you out there are going, Dave, you don't know what you're talking about? <laughs> sorry about that. It is darulite and the and the green, see it's a little bit more of a glowy, glowy color. That's what I use like on those sunrise, sunsets, like on that ship and stuff like that. I use that here. Let's push this back, back up underneath that just a bit. A little bit of shadow underneath that leaf there. And I love that. So you got this kind of a modern rose composition here. In just about an hour, just about an hour is what we did this in. And, you know, could you have more in there? Yeah, you could. But, you know, I mean, it's, I like, is it enough to overcome the outside of the frame? Yeah, you could have maybe a little bit more white or light color in there. I'm afraid to really kind of do it because of the... You know, I like, I love that movement of it there. I could put a little bit more, but I do love the gold. And the golds will just shimmer and stuff in there like that. But that'll give you a kind of a nice, a pretty look. It's a very uh, elegant look here to the roses and stuff. A little bit different than those, but catches some of the general feelings of it and stuff. So kind of a nice. You can always come back. Now, you see, if you decide later, let's let this dry completely 24 hours and you come back and you decide later 
that you want to maybe lighten up those roses, but you're not sure, what you can do is you can go ahead and give it a coat of, we have a product called multi-surface sealer or a product called glazing medium. Give it a coat of that, just thin it out a little bit with water, just brush it over, let it dry completely. Then you just give a, a light coat of uh, extender over that area and then you can uh, tint on a little yellow and work right up some more whites and golds if you want to do that. The nice thing is if you've protected it with that medium or with the sealer or the glazing medium, what you can do is if you don't like it, you just get a wet rag and you wipe it right back off because it's all protected and so you'll go right back to the painting the way you have it. But sometimes glazing techniques and stuff can really add a lot more punch and stuff to your flowers. So you can add more yellows, more lights and stuff like that to the glazing. Now in the uh, on the channel here, if you just go up to search on my on my videos here, just put in the word glazing, you'll see where I've done that on other roses. And you can see whether or not you like that because it really does work really nice okay so that's one of your techniques you can use the other thing is when you give it a coat of sealer and stuff not only does it protect it but it wakes up the colors a little bit about what they're going to look like when they're varnished so you may wake up the colors and go no i don't need that okay so it's a good thing to to look at it okay so yeah and that's just almost dry there but a nice casual rose for you there painting for that and um hope you enjoy that if you have any kinds of questions and stuff don't forget to hit the comments down there okay don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you don't if you haven't done that making sure that you click that little bell so that that little bell note lets you know they'll notify you when we have a new video out and stuff okay all right so i hope you enjoyed this i hope i'm going to be continuing doing some of this just taking you along every once in a while when, as what I work as a professional artist, some of the stuff I do, because it's just kind of fun. All right? Okay, guys. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for joining me.